This video is designed to accompany the protocol Panel Optimization for High Dimensional Immunophenotyping Assays Using Full Spectrum Flow Cytometry. This is video 4, which follows Basic Protocol 3, Evaluation of Marker Resolution, Part 2, Deciding the Approach for Mitigating Autofluorescence. There are two situations that need to be considered whenever you're looking at the autofluorescence approach you need to use when doing your spectral unmixing. The first is when you have homogeneous autofluorescence, or all cells in your sample have the same or very, very similar uh, autofluorescence spectral characteristics. So the data that we've been working with in the previous videos is a good example of homogeneous autofluorescence. This panel is only interested in T-cells and all lymphocytes have the same autofluorescent spectral signature as we can see by this very nicely defined single signature here in the spectral plot. So when we're dealing with homogeneous autofluorescence there's really only two options available to you. You can either unmix with autofluorescence extraction or without autofluorescence extraction as there is only a single spectral signature that is able to be removed. So to do this, all we do is go to the unmixing wizard and select autofluorescence as a fluorescent tag and this will extract autofluorescence from all of our samples. Once we go into the unmixing wizard and set our gates if we come down to the unstained, where autofluorescence is defined, we want to be sure that we are gating only on our population of interest, as we only want to extract the autofluorescence of the cells we will be analysing in the unmixed sample. So in this case, I only want to gate on my lymphocytes. And then I would go forward and unmix and check my n by n matrices just like we did in video 2.1 and see how the unmixing works. And then I would do the unmixing again without autofluorescent extraction and compare the two results. It is helpful to place them side by side in a presentation and see what differences uh, occur with or without autofluorescent extraction. So here's an example of a marker that without autofluorescence extraction we can see uh, space between the positive and negative populations but when we extract autofluorescence our negative shifts down to zero where it should be but our positive stays in the same space so we get better resolution between positive and negative. However you must be wary that sometimes autofluorescence extraction can make things worse for certain markers. So it becomes a bit of a trade-off. So here we have an example of with autofluorescence extraction, we get an increased spread in this marker on the x-axis, which could impact our resolution between our positive and negative population, which we do not see without autofluorescence extraction. And all of these plots are scaled identically. So we know that this is real spreading. So it becomes a trade-off whether you want to lose resolution on this marker or improve resolution on this marker, which form of unmixing you will choose. In a sample such as this, where uh, you have multiple different populations with the same uh, autofluorescent spectral signature, if you were in fact interested in the monocyte population, then you would want to try unmixing with uh, autofluorescence extraction, gating on this population as well, to see how that performs. Because it is the same signature, only brighter, um, so you want to check which autofluorescence option works well for you. But as in this panel, we're only looking at lymphocytes, we would only ever set the gate on lymphocytes.